This video is going to serve as my intro into portraiture. And to get started, what I did is mixed up a brown tone. And you'll notice I'm taking my time building this up. I'm working on a matte photo paper, which is obviously not ideal. What would happen if you put that paint in there really, really fast, it would absorb too much moisture and cause it to curl up. Now, the second color that I'm working with, although it probably looks black on the reference right now without any colors around it, it is not actually black. It is a very, very dark gray mixed with a little bit of brown tones. And I'm going to mix that back color up. I will use some black in here when I get to the eyelashes and... The reason I'm pulling back a little bit lighter than what is in the reference, I also knew that my eyelashes were not going to be able to reach that really dark black that the printer was able to give me in the reference. So I made sure to leave a little bit of room in there so that those eyelashes would show up. Even though it's a very subtle thing, they still have to show through there or it's going to show up and be lacking in your picture. It's important to keep in mind that those subtle tones can make and break your picture. All of the color up colors I'm going to use with the exception of one spot in this painting are going to be done with opaques and all of them were actually mixed up using tint, tone, and shade which we'll go over in a future video. Um, but that basically just means I'm mixing grays or whites and blacks with my paints to get the colors that I'm working on, putting on those subtle tones on the left hand side. Every color is not a guess. It is all mixed up based upon the reference. Although I did make a major mistake, despite the fact that this painting displays pretty well, I made a major mistake in this painting and I will show you guys where I made it and also explain to you what you can do in the future to prevent that from happening. So what I'm doing is putting in my base color. And so I've mixed up three, or I'm going to mix up three different shades of color for the skin below the eye and on the cheek, which will be a light tone, a mid tone, and a shadow tone. And then I'm using my dot stencil and I'm kind of pulling that in the direction of the hair all, or the skin. All skin has kind of a directional flow to it. And I'm not going to put every detail in this painting that exists in the reference but I'm working in a little bit of a figure eight motion there and using some of these dots. And even though I'm working with an opaque, it's gonna create just a little bit of texture that will keep my painting from having that plasticky look that you can be associated with airbrushing quite often. Important to note also that I will always extend out my light colors despite the fact that I'll be putting darker colors on later in order to prevent an abrupt color change. Even though we're working with opaques, you still could get a color shift when painting your darker color over the lighter. All right, so now I'm going to turn my attention to start work on the eye. And so we're going to work on the white of the eye. And you see how dark that tone is. That's why you see I used a paper punch to show how dark that tone actually is. And so what I'm going to do, I put a lighter gray tone in up close to the iris. And then I came back with that darker tone on the very, very edge. As you'll see, looking here, how I left out just a little section before the iris for that lighter gray shade. And you can see that as it exists in the reference there. We're going to do two different colors for the tear duct of the eye, plus some highlighting. So that first color is a light pink, which was just a little bit of magenta mixed up with some white. And then we added a little bit of green to that same mix, made that brown. We're going to use that for the darkening part, darker part of the tear duct. And then we also used it for that shadow, that cast shadow that cast on the eyeball. We're going to do a little bit of erasing right there. I brought that brown tone into the skin fold, but we can't do a lot of erasing because again, we are working on a surface that can tear very easily. Now I'm going to turn my attention to the hair and hair is really just not as difficult as people make it out to be. We're going to do a little bit of scratching and erasing here too as well, but of course we can't do a ton because again, we're working on a surface not really capable. As you can see, I created some great lines there. That tone that I'm mixing with is, again, you guessed it, a little bit of brown mixed with some grays, some very dark grays. And you'll see I will take my, that's a, an aggressive sand eraser and then 
an aggressive pencil eraser and I'm gonna start pulling out some of those hairs and then we're going to come in with some transparents. And this is why we use transparent paints. If I would have come in with an opaque, it would have covered the subtle tones that I created in the hair and wiped out those textures. Also, it would have tended to, as I put a lighter opaque over the darker opaque, it would have caused a shift in the tone. I was able to lay the transparents over there because the reddish browns that I put over the top of this hair were almost not showing whatsoever on the darks, but yet left me that nice vibrant color on the lighter portions of the hair. I first came in with Sienna and then I used just a little bit of Mangenta to give it a little bit more red. So now I'm going to make up, mix up the second tone and that color was made with orange and gray. And that is, that is it, it mixed up some orange and some gray. You can always shift the hues a little bit, but that worked out just where I needed to be. So I'm going to come in and put the shadows in as they need to be, as the beginning portion of the shadow. And of course, there's another darker color of the shadow. And this is where I made the mistake. And I'm gonna show you guys what was the mistake was here in just a moment. But as you can see, I'm also adding textures as I work. As I was putting the second tone in there, instead of relying on the fact that I knew I mixed the first lightest shade in there, I started looking at my eyes and I brought some of that secondary tone over the top of the lighter portion of the cheek here. And even though it displays pretty well in the end, it would have displayed better had I left it alone. It would have created a little more contrast and a little bit more pop. And that is what happens when you start trusting your eyes before you have all of your colors in there. It's very easy to see something and think it needs to have more paint or be darker. And what you need to learn to do is trust the process and count on the fact that you mix the color accurately the first time and trust that process and you will be much better off. It's one of the reasons I prefer prefer to teach people to work with opaques because imagine I'm an experienced artist and I looked at that painting and decided to add more color with an opaque. Imagine it, if you're working with transparency, you have to look all the time to make sure you're not going too dark. How much easier it would be to go too dark. Anyway, let's get back to work. Okay, not a lot to talk about here. We're going to just continue to build that second tone. I did use a texture shield a little bit there, and but we're going to work that texture shown, and all you got to do is pay attention to the direction and how far back your shadows need to be. Now, I've mixed up the third tone, which is a really, really dark tone, very, very darkish reddish brown, and we're going to put that in there, and I was able to use that also around the eyes and use that for a little of that cast shadow that came off of the eyelashes across the cheek there which you should be able to see as we get closer up on that picture here in a moment now in this darker tone i used burnt umber and red violet to make that dark shade there and i want to come in here and work on these eyelashes of course there's a lot of different ways you can do these small eyelashes you can you know tape them off you can use a shield something along those lines i just prefer to freehand them in when i can okay now i know you guys have been waiting for this we're finally getting around to the iris remember we got to leave it out there on the right hand side so that we do not cover up that lighter shade so as you notice i'm actually putting in textures as i go and I, what i'll do is i mix my lightest green and then i will mix a darker green and just add a little more dark to it and then I will use a little bit of burnt sienna and a light gray to mix that inside color for the tone. And we'll just continue to work our darks. And of course, obviously, I'm putting in a lot of textures as I go along. But you, the only way you can do that is using shields like that. That's a very dark green, as you can see there. And I'm going to bring that around. Even though those outside colors will be darker, I will, I will use that green throughout in there. Eventually what I'm going to use is a almost black color for the shadows and then I'll clean up that pupil when I get to that dark color as well. 
I prefer not to use a stencil around the edge of the eyes because I want that to be just a little bit fuzzy like nature. And that is why I worked it that way. And that last color we're working with is a very dark blue. So it's blue mixed with black is what's giving me that actual tone there. And there'll be a few things we need to clean up and a few things we'll do to this painting and can do to this painting before it's finished. When you got that far in the painting, that is the time in which you should start thinking about maybe possibly using a transparent. I actually did use just a little transparent red here that I didn't get in the video, just to give this this little warm glow right here on the edge of the cheek. Um, and there's still more work I could do to it. But again, this is on, you know, photo matte photo paper, so that you can't get too crazy with it. It won't take a lot of moisture and it will not take a blade whatsoever. So. Anyway, that's going to wrap up today. I hope this gets you guys thinking, and we appreciate every single one of you come by. Those of you who don't know me, I am Bill Kennedy with the Airspace, and that's going to be a wrap for today. I appreciate y'all. Y'all have a good one. Bye.